Today, you're going to learn two strange ways or two different ways to learn English effectively. Now, I don't see a lot of students doing what I'm going to explain here, but I think that these two ways are super effective. They are really effective when it comes to acquiring English and being able to talk about subjects that you like. So what we're going to do is talk about the power of input first, how most people get their input and why you should be doing this too. And then we'll talk about the two different methods that I think you should also try. But before all that, my name is Jack from To Fluency. Welcome to you. If you are new here, then please subscribe to the YouTube channel and also check out the description because I have some really good resources for you as well as the chapters for this lesson. Let's start with input because input is so important when it comes to learning English. And you can think of this as things that you read and things that you listen to or watch. So reading a book is input. Listening to this podcast is input. Watching a movie in English is input. Listening to somebody when they speak is input. And I like antimoon.com and the way they explain things. So I'm just going to summarize what they say here when it comes to input and output and why this is so important. And I'll leave a link to this article in the description. But basically you get input and you read and listen to sentences in a language and then you understand these sentences and then they are stored in your brain. And then when you want to say or write something in English, your brain takes those sentences that you have learned and allows you to express yourself. And you can be flexible in this too, because if you learn a certain sentence, you can adapt this to whatever you want to say. For example, if you've learned, I'm excited about going to the party, you can adapt this to, I'm excited about seeing you later. So we're always adapting the sentences that we've learned. And the more sentences we get, the more vocabulary we have, and also the more that we understand grammar. So when it comes to input, this is really important to read a lot, to listen a lot, and also to watch things. Another important thing here about input is there's also a model that talks about comprehensible input. And this means being able to understand what you are reading and understand what you are listening to. And a lot of this comes down to what you know, the language that you know. But it's also important to learn things and to watch things, listen to things, get input on the things that you're interested in for two reasons. Firstly, you're going to be engaged. You're going to be open to this language. And secondly, we often talk about things that we're interested in and we hang out with people who have similar interests. So if you like fishing and you go fishing all the time, then you're going to talk about fishing. When someone asks, what did you do yesterday? Oh, I went fishing. I caught some fish, etc. So in summary, input is super important because you're going to see language being used naturally. And you're going to internalize these sentences, these chunks of language, these phrases, and then you'll be able to imitate this and use your own sentences when it comes to writing and speaking. Therefore, you should always be looking to get more input, the more the better but make it comprehensible so it's not too difficult for you. And also read and listen to things that you are interested in. Okay, so let's talk about what most students do here before we talk about the two other ways that I want to share today. So most students do things like change their phone into English. That's the first one. This is actually such a great thing to do because you're going to get the repetitive language on your phone. And you can take this a little bit further by 
using apps in English as well. So if you're on social media, let's say Twitter, then follow English accounts or accounts that are in the English language. You can also listen to podcasts like this one. Right now, you're getting comprehensible input because if you're listening to this, you probably understand most of what I say. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, this is not true when it comes to movies in English or having conversations. And I've talked about that before, but just in summary, that's going to take time. And it's important to build up your listening abilities by getting comprehensible input. So don't feel bad about the fact you can't understand movies if you can't, or you can't understand people when they speak in real life. Just do what you can do now and know that you're always going to improve if you keep getting input. And then two other ways that are really popular is to watch TV in English. I love this way as well. Um, it becomes more comprehensible the more you watch. So the more you watch TV, the more comprehensible it becomes because you're going to understand the characters, understand the way people speak. And it's going to be a lot more comprehensible if you stick with a TV series. And one TV series that I recommend at the moment, something I really enjoy, is called Ted Lasso. Now, it can be quite difficult to understand certain characters. Sometimes I struggle because they speak quite quickly and there are a lot of cultural references, but it really shows a good difference between British English and American English and also the two cultures. And then finally, I really like graded readers for reading. And this is where companies take books and they adapt them for different levels. So this is perfect for comprehensible input. Find books that are at your level or just above your level and enjoy reading them. The more you read, the better. Okay, so, so far you've learned that input is important. The more you get, the better, but you want to get comprehensible input and also listen and watch things that are interesting to you. So just to go back to following accounts on Twitter, follow accounts that are interesting to you. Choose the topics that you like to talk about. Again, if you like fishing, then follow accounts in English that talk about fishing. After a while, you're going to get used to and learn the different vocabulary that people use to talk about fishing. And now it's time to talk about the two other ways that you can learn English and get lots of input. Now, the first way I think is great because most people who are learning languages are also interested in learning in general. And this is something that I found with a lot of my students that they have this desire to learn new things. So people generally who like to learn languages like to learn music as well or learn how to play a musical instrument. And what I'm going to say now is this, when it comes to learning new things, do this in English and get excited about learning new things in English. I'm going to use a different example other than fishing now. Let's use the photography example. So let's say you are suddenly interested in photography. You've just got a new camera and you're thinking, okay, I need to learn how to use this camera. Here is what I recommend. Firstly, learn the key terms when it comes to photography, because when you embrace yourself or engage in a new subject, there are going to be all these new words and phrases that you need to learn in order to understand this subject. So for photography, it might be composition, aperture, shutter speed, lenses, batteries, lighting, etc. There are so many other terms. Those are just some of the terms that I thought of initially. So take a little bit of time, do a search for keywords and phrases in English photography and learn those keywords and phrases. The next thing to do 
is to get on YouTube and start watching photography channels. There are so many out there if you're interested in photography. It's the same for hunting and fishing or politics. There is so much out there when it comes to learning something new. For example, I love history and I'm constantly watching or listening to history videos and podcasts. There are so many different channels out there and the first step is to try different channels to see which ones work for you. I know with some history channels that people speak really quickly and I personally don't like it when I watch a video which is really quick but as somebody learning English that might be too difficult for you. So the first step is to find the channels that you like. Find the channels that you think, okay, these are good ones. I like these channels. They're interesting. The person speaks in a way that I can understand and you just get a good feel for the channel. And then subscribe and watch those videos. And what you're going to find is that you'll get used to the way people speak on that channel. So people use the same words and phrases all the time and you're going to get that repetition. You'll get used to the way that person speaks, their accents, their intonation, the rhythm, the cadence in general. You'll get used to the way that they speak. And also, you're going to get lots of repetition because when you study or learn something new, You're constantly listening and seeing these sentences said again and again. And they're going to use them flexibly too. So you're going to get really good input here. Input that you should understand after a while because you've learned the new words and phrases and you're getting repetition. And also input that you're interested in. So then you can learn these sentences and be able to use them when you talk about what you're learning, what you're interested in. So the first challenge for today is to think about what you're interested in and what you want to learn. And then go on YouTube and find channels that help you with that. And then if you want to take it a step further, you can find courses too. So you can take courses in English about any topic that you want to learn. So maybe you want to learn how to dance. You want to become a better dancer. Well, use this method because you're going to be learning something new and you're going to be doing it in English. And because you're engaged in improving, you want to improve your dancing, your photography, whatever it is, then you're going to be highly motivated to watch videos, to take courses, to keep going at what you're doing. The next thing to do The second way to get input in an engaging way is to read reviews in English. Now, I'm sure you spend a certain amount of time most days reading reviews about things because we're always thinking about going on vacation, buying something new, getting some new food item. And you can go online and read reviews in English whenever you're going to do this in your native language. To help you understand this, what I've done is I found a coffee machine or a pour over coffee maker on Amazon. And I'm just gonna read part of the top review. Okay, are you ready? I know that this is probably one of the trendiest ways to make coffee nowadays, but truth be told, When I was a little girl, my father had a very similar coffee maker that he would have set up first thing in the morning and after dinner. I loved the ritual of watching him make coffee the pour over way. Now, something about this is that what we're doing here is we're using vocabulary or learning vocabulary that is specific to coffee. Now, you might not have understood everything there, For example, a trendy way. Now, if something's trendy, it means it's popular right now. And you can think about fashion in that way. But you're also getting 
lots of natural English where people are writing in a way that is engaging and fun to read. People like to tell stories in reviews, especially the top reviews. And most people here are talking in the first person. And I remember reading some advice from a polyglot, somebody who can speak a lot of languages, saying, learn as much as you can in the first person because that's how you're going to speak the most. That's the type of English you're going to use the most. So when you read these reviews, you're going to get a lot of first person language. Now, another reason to read reviews in English is because you're going to get the repetition as well, where people are going to talk about the same things, use the same language, but maybe in slightly different ways. So that's going to help you with the context of what things mean. Now, you can always look things up if you don't understand a word or a phrase. Um, a, a great example here is the idiom, truth be told. But truth be told, when I was a little girl, my father had a very similar coffee maker. And this just means, or this is used to say that you're stating the truth. Truth be told, you're stating the truth. Now you can do this for anything that you want to buy or restaurants you want to visit or places you want to go, countries you want to visit too and whatever you can do in those places. And I think you'll find that we often read a lot of reviews these days. It's something that we, we like to do in order to know what we're getting is the best thing for us. So start doing this in English too. The next time you want to read a review about something, go on amazon.com or any website that's in English and start reading those reviews. Okay, so those are two different ways to get the input that you need in English. And the key to this lesson is just finding things that you do now in your native language and think about doing them in English instead, especially things that you are really engaged in. So again, if you're really passionate about photography, then start watching photography channels and listen to photography podcasts all in English. That repetition is really going to help you. The repetition is so important, but you're also learning things that you are passionate about, meaning you, you want to know. You're going to persevere and do this. You're going to continue learning, but also you're going to learn the type of language that you're going to use when you speak in English. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this English lesson, then just click that like button. It really does help the channel and it just shows your appreciation for my lessons. And if you're new here, then subscribe to the channel and also turn on the notification bell so that you can get notified of new lessons. So what I want you to do now is to leave a comment below telling me what you are interested in and what you're going to learn in English. I think this could be really inspiring for other people and also for me as well. I love to see people talk about how they're going to take action on the lessons that I give. And then share this with a friend. So just click that share button and send it over to them through Messenger, iMessage, whatever text message that you use, or just share it on Facebook or Twitter or any social network. And thank you for listening. It's great to have you here. Be sure to watch another one of my videos. I'll leave some on your screen now. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.